In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, we celebrate it during this whole octave in a special way. And it's my first opportunity, I think, to wish all of you here and at home a very happy Easter season. In the... Um, Matthew 25, we read, Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. And so, with this wonderful invitation, the invitation to God's mercy, God's love, we open our hearts as we pray. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, 
Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladdened us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. A man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing praise to him, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory to Two of 
Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem named called uh, Emmaus. And they were conversing all about, about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looked downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty indeed in word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But they were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished before from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he had made known to them, how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, today in the scriptures we find human encounters that find that that turn out to be very spiritual encounters where the human meets the divine. In the Acts of the Apostles, we see how the Peter and his companion, John, uh, are able to help someone with, through the power of the Holy Spirit that they have received. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus the Nazarene, rise and walk. They had great power, the power that the Spirit gave them, the power that 
glory comes from the newly risen Christ. In the Gospel today is a beautiful account of how the uh, disciples on their way to Emmaus encounter Jesus. Uh, they're walking along with their heads down, very disconsolate, very uh, disturbed at what had happened. They were discouraged. What they had believed seemed to have been taken away from them. They thought that Jesus would, would be truly a great Messiah, a great Savior, a great Master who would lead them uh, throughout their lives and, and do great things for many years to come. But here he had been crucified and he died. And there were accounts that he was alive. But that could be just uh, gossip or, or something, some illusion. And so they were very discouraged. But they found that Jesus uh, was walking beside them. He kind of joined them uninvited. And uh, he asked them, well, what's going on with you? And they told him all their sorrows, all their disappointments, and they entrusted themselves in a very uh, human way what they were feeling. But Jesus um, took on his robe, robe uh, a robe, rather robe of rabbi, and began to teach them, uh, began to uh, give them an instruction that opened their eyes so that they could see, review what had happened in the life of Jesus as well as their own lives. And they were kind of consoled. They were feeling better. And as Jesus was about to leave them, go further, uh, they found that, well, we must invite this man, this friend, to stay with us. And we, we see how, in their view, Jesus truly reveals himself. Not by the, only by the words that he said that were kind of incomplete on their way, but as he broke the bread, so they must have known very much about the Last Supper, very much about that wonderful incident that only a few of them were able to participate in. And we see here how uh, the Eucharist uh, is, is enacted, is celebrated there uh, with them. And with that, they truly believed in, in what Jesus had, uh, what Jesus had told them, and they recognized him. We do the very same things. We come to the Eucharist, uh, but first we listen to God's word. Uh, we come also to be, to be fed, to share in this Eucharistic banquet, this sacrifice of Christ that is, again, continue in our lives uh, to bring to mind what we truly experience with Christ. Uh, we come with our heads bowed sometimes, uh, with our discouragement, uh, with our failure to understand that, yes, Jesus is with us. And this Eucharist, as we celebrate it, should really open our eyes. As it, I experience that in my own celebration of the Eucharist, as I attend the Eucharist and participate in it. So I invite all of you at home uh, to really see in this Eucharist more and more uh, the presence of Christ, the love of Christ, what he offers you as you uh, go through your daily lives, as you experience the hardships, the doubts, the difficulties, the pains, the, uh, ex the experience of not recognizing 
recognizing God in your life. He is truly in our lives. And he expresses that in the Eucharist. So as we continue the Eucharist today, let us be mindful of, of, of Christ's presence, of Christ's invitation, in all that he wants to bring us in, uh, in, in, in our lives, all our needs, all our wants, and all our joys. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed is God forever.
pray to my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is pretty right and just. Our duty is our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be both heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer one another the sign of peace. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And I unite myself wholly to you, never 
Let us pray. We pray, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to the prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of the souls. Amen. Brothers and sisters, while you are at home, continue to frequent our website, our parish website, also to go to the different links at the website, especially form, and uh, continue to uh, celebrate this season with a good reading and prayer. Bow now and pray before God's for God's blessing. May God, who is the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption of, and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.